Hi, it's me, Anya, and welcome back to Cozy Room Podcast. Hey guys, it's Ari. Welcome back to Cozy Room. Womb, girl. Womb, girl. <laughs> I had the best sleep after them girls got on that bus. My God. I was delirious when I woke up. When I tell you, I was in that dream. I was in that dream. I was somewhere else. Whew. But it's time to prepare to throw eight hours of my day away. Welcome to Cozy Room Podcast. My name is Shan. I am the mom of the girls. I am the creator of Cozy Room Podcast. This is the podcast that I started way back in 2018 to give you the real about parenting because I feel like all books just give you fluff, okay? So if you want to know the honest opinion about parenting, go through my old episodes, go through my old seasons. I promise you, I'm not going to lie to you about it. This one right here is a bonus, though. I want to talk about the hardest thing about life for me as a mom of two is doing it again. Now, I'm not having any more kids, but I'm saying like day in, day out, doing it again. Waking up for me and for them Getting them prepared for their school day. Making sure they have their clothes and this iron and they have an undershirt and they put on deodorant and they lotion and all of that stuff. I would say that's the hardest part because me personally, I've always hated um, doing the same thing every day. So I'm a city girl, not the city girls on the radio or, or in music. I'm a city girl in the sense that I grew up in Philly, and no two days were ever the same. I lived in New York for years. No two days were ever the same. But down south, and when you have children that need consistency, there's a lot of days that are the same. And that right there is really hard for me to find joy with all the time because I don't like things being the same too long. Um, I get really bored. Uh, I feel like I'm living someone else's life because I have to do something this way because of these set rules in place. And if I go out the box of this, I'll be looked at as not being a great mom or, you know, I'll be failing or I'll be failing them and it's my responsibility and blah, 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 blah. And it's just, do y'all know the struggle I go through within to to wake up at this time early in the morning? And I don't like waking up early in the morning to come through and make sure I do this to watch this clock, to have 12 alarms per day so I can stay on task, to try to create my schedule around a bus leaving, a bus coming, um, them needing homework, me cooking for them, uh, me having to come up with, you know, meals days in advance. Like, that is no easy feat. And how I'm doing it, for the outside people to be like, oh, oh, Chantal's a great mom. She, Do I love it? No. But I do it because I am determined to make sure that my children have a better upbringing than I did. I am determined to make sure that what I needed as a kid, they have. Now, let me be honest. I hate um, expected things to be done. I hate mundaneness. I hate routine and like what you can do. So for me, (laughs) for me, the hardest part of my daily life is knowing, Chantal, you have to do it again. You have to do it again on Monday. You have to do it again on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And then 
Friday night, you have a little freedom. Saturday, you have a little freedom. Sunday, you got a little freedom until about 5 p.m. And then it becomes like pre-Monday. And I hate having such a predetermined lifestyle right now. But I know it's a sacrifice for my children to have some sort of normalcy. So I see it through. But let's talk about it. I want to thank you again for checking out Cozy Room Podcast. Every listen helps. Every download helps. Every review helps. And if you are interested in checking out some of the merch for the show, you could go to Cozy Room Shop with Teespring and get whatever you like to represent your love for the show. And I appreciate you. You can also check me out at shambipodden.com. Mommy, can you talk to me over here? Because I, I, I can't um, read this. I can't read what they're saying. Talk to me over here. I also think sometimes moms, I can't speak for dads because I've never been in that position, but <clears throat> moms can easily lose themselves in being a mom. You can easily lose yourself in showing up for multiple kids or showing up for one kid and making sure they're quote unquote well rounded. They go to swim team, they go to gymnastics, they go to cheerleading, they go to dance, they um have play dates on the weekends, they go to after school activities, they have friends, they um are, you know, on the honor roll system, they take these classes you have a tutor for them where are you in the mix where are you in the mix of being all of those great things and providing those great activities to your child and people will have children raise your children the best way they can their children get to a point where they're adulting now and that they go to the mirror <clears throat> and they do not know who that is. They do not know who their reflection is. They do not know how did they get here. They do not know um, what they want to do anymore. They don't know what to do with themselves, being that their child is grown enough to do it alone. Um, they have no direction. Every day, like, they're like, super i'm just calling a chicken uh, do you need anything because you have devoted your everything to a child who is a part of you but not you right and i think that's very important to remind yourself as a parent that your child is a part of you not you because a lot of times if our child you know doesn't do well we blame ourselves if our child is super excellent we think their accolades are ours and it's not you and another individual came together and y'all created this human being and you raised this human being together or separately the best way that you can and throughout it i think it's very important that we show our children that I'm your mom, but I also have this thing that I love to do here too, and I devote time to it. And it does require balancing time. It does require us not being able to do something fun you want to do all the time. It does require um, a certain level of attention. It does require for me to study certain things. It does require for me to fail at it sometimes but return back to it. And that is how we show our children to persevere. That is how we show our children to push through. That is how we show our children that there's more to life than just quote unquote working and making money. Because for me as a kid, I thought you just get to an age as a grown up, and you just have a house, you have an apartment, you have a car, you have money. I didn't know the process that you work a certain job to allow you to have these things, or you work a job where you can't afford these things and you don't have these things, and you just have a room, or you just stay on somebody's couch, or you don't have anything at all. And I think the earlier your children understand that process, the better off they'll be because 
If you try to raise your child in this bubble, like, just do your best, you'll have it all. Whoo-wee! The smack in life that you are going to give them later on is going to be hard. Okay? Sometimes in life, you can do your best and your best is not good enough and you're still going to be in your parents' house if you're lucky in your late 20s, in your 30s, some people even in their 40s. Some people just gave up having a relationship of their own and they still live with their parents because now their parents are at an old age where they need someone and they can depend on their child as older as an adult to be there with them because they probably didn't remarry or get married at all. And so this whole notion of I want to do it myself. I don't need nobody. I don't I don't I don't ever want to get on that bandwagon because I'm I'm already tired. I'm tired, but I'm not desperate. I'm tired, but I'm not crazy, okay? I know that there are a lot of men out here. As a single woman, I know there's a lot of men out here who look like men, are the age of a man, but mentally, emotionally, they are a child. And so I am not interested in having the body of a man around me in my life or in my home because having a man, is it should be a goal for me as a woman. And I need the help. Listen, help will be great, but authentic, genuine ness and, and and two people wanting to build together and work together is more important to me. Um, I will never hop in a relationship with a man just because he has money. I will never hop into a relationship with a man just because he checks off my basic boxes. My basic boxes as a mother of two is that you should have one child or more. You should be really single. And when I say really single, I'm talking about you're not dappling with the mom of your child, but y'all not together. Y'all don't call it nothing. Um, you know, you are, if we go out to eat, I got to worry about somebody walking up and wanting to have a conversation with you and want to know who I am. Like, like your plate is not messy, you know? And, um, you got to get this whole need to have more kids completely out your system because I don't want more kids biologically. And so that is my basics. And everything added to that has to add into what we talk about. And I'm somebody where I'm just not about to, let me give you my list of what I need in a man so you can listen to this and, and, and act your butt off. No. You know, um, that's something you'll learn along the way. But that is like my basics. And I honestly feel like a lot of males today are looking for that desperate single mother who needs a man in her life to cut her lawn, needs a man in her life to give her affection, needs a man in her life to drive her places, needs a man in her life to walk with when she's shopping, needs a man in her life to be able to take her car to the mechanic because, you know, he's not a mechanic, but a man needs to do that or a man needs to... What? Who told y'all, like, these are, like, the things? The things are different for every woman, and I don't necessarily need to live with a man to make me feel like I am a woman, you know? Um, I think the concept of marriage is shifting for a lot of people. The need to be married is, I feel like, slowly but surely coming extinct for a lot of people. Unless your values are, I need to be married. It needs to look like this. And do you agree? I agree. Do you get angry? And then y'all do that. Like, if that's what y'all want to do, what you want to do. But for me... Marriage is looking like, ooh, you know? Um, and also for me, I have no intentions or 
inklings or want to in me to cohabitate with a man that I am not married to. So it's so funny, like people think I'm weird, but you having your own place and me having my own place, that'll be cool with me. You know, unless your goal is like, no, I want to be married. I want to live with the woman I'm going to marry. Okay, cool. Go find her. But like this idea of, you know, I met a man, we're dating. We decided to move in together and we both have kids. What is stopping you from being married at that point? Because if I take on someone else's children and they take on my children as a responsibility, what is stopping us from being married? And I think a lot of people are scared to commit to a value system, a standard system, because they don't want someone being able to hold them accountable. But if you're dealing with somebody else's children and their feelings and their life and their habits, you're already committing. You're already taking on something serious, you know? And so I'm not into playing house with a man. I don't want no one playing with my feelings. I don't want no one playing with my time. So this whole notion of don't you want this or you're at an age where you need I know what I need. I need help. I need my gutters clean. I don't want to buy a ladder to get on the roof of the house and clean it. I um I I need my bathroom painted like I would love help. I would love a helpmate. Um, but I'm not desperate for one. Like, I'm not going to the grocery store in my Sunday's best dressed up trying to get a man. I'm not going to every club in Atlanta looking for a man for me. I don't feel like, ooh, girl, I need to go out Friday and I need to look my best so I can find me, man. Like, that has never been in me. Um... I never went out looking for any of my exes. <laughs> like, I don't... That whole, girl, let's look cute. Let's go out. Let's go get some drinks. Like, I don't even like drinking outside my house. Like, I probably drink probably three times a year. Max. Okay? There's wine in my fridge that I really don't touch at all. You know, I, I'm... What people do... In adulthood, I don't do. And um, I feel like that has helped keep me out of a lot of drama. That has helped uh, keep me level-headed, keep me focused. I don't uh, care to one-night stand men. I don't care to have multiple men around my children. I don't want no one playing daddy to my children that's not their dad. Um, and we're not in a serious relationship where I know, like, you want to be here, you want to stay. We have, uh, goals that we want to do together. We're stepping on the same step together in life. Like, if it's not that, I don't need you to play house with me. And I think a lot of people are out here playing house and very surprised when they're disappointed that. A relationship doesn't work. And I'm just like, you're skipping steps and hoping for the best. And I'm not trying to do that. And so this whole need to show up for your kids, I can do that. But this every day has to be the same. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And then what changes for me is, you know, Ari will go with her dad for the weekends. And Anya will stay with me unless it's like Ari's birthday and they go out together. Ari's dad will take both of them. But Anya doesn't go with Ari. So Ari become Anya becomes like my plus one for everything. My plus one when I go, when I go get my hair done. My plus one when I go shopping. My plus one when I do self-care things for myself. Um, it's rare that I have like someone that can Anya stay while I go do X, Y, and Z. Because my friends work and they have different kinds of lives that they live in. Um, I never wanted to be the mom that dumped her kid 
on other people because she wanted to have me time. I've seen parents do that in the past and that leaves loopholes for things to happen that shouldn't happen that may cause trauma later. And so I make it a point that I just don't complain about it and I just do it. And I don't want Anya to feel like, oh, you're in the way. Um, You know, I don't want to be around you. Um, I wish you could go somewhere. I don't want her to feel like that because the reality of it, I wish Anya had a dad that cared about spending time with her and having her with him whenever he could. And Anya has a dad that does not care to do that. He does not care to be a father. He does not care to be responsible. He doesn't care to check in. He doesn't care to show up. He doesn't care to provide. Um, Anya hasn't heard from her dad since last October. Yeah. We are in May now. And, And like... Y'all like y'all know I always feel guilty for who I chose to be Anya's dad, but that's spilt milk now, you know, and I'm I'm adjusting to that. So yeah, my every week is usually, you know, calculated. And ugh, I hate that, but that's just what it is. That's just how I have to show up as a mom. And I know there's other moms that feel like me, like, oh my God, I got to do this again. Oh my God, I got to schedule this again. Oh my God, I got to, you know, come here again. Oh my God, I got to get y'all in the truck and drive here with y'all. And then I have to make sure y'all doing this while I do that. It's exhausting. And just like this this morning, I was so tired. And I'm just like, girl, I wish somebody else could take y'all to the bus stop. I could sleep. I'm so tired. And I was like, when the bus comes, I'm coming right back in here and I'm going to sleep. And I did, you know, until I had to work. But I would love to wake up and and have a partner and say, can you can you help get them ready and take them to the bus stop? I'm really tired. And him be like, sure, no problem. What? Do you understand how that level of peace, that level of um, help, that level of, ooh, would be lifted off of me? And I can just feel very much fulfilled with my day and not worry so much and not have to beat it all the time. I think that's most of the turnoff with being a mom for me is knowing that I'm gonna give I'm gonna give artist daddy his percentage. Knowing that 95% of the time I am it. Okay. The other 5% I'll give to like artist dad and like my best friends for like wanting to get the girls sometimes. But yeah, other than that. It is rough. It is hard to um, continuously be it and not have somebody to tag in and be like, can you do it this time? Can you help make them lunch this time? Can you help make them breakfast this time? Can you help prepare dinner this time? Can you, um, you know, get them off the bus this time? Like when my mom was here visiting, oh my God. I got a little glimpse of experiencing that. And I'm just like, oh my gosh, this is such a great help. But at the same time, I found myself getting used to it too much. And I knew eventually it will come to an end and these dishes will be yours. And this cooking will be yours. And this ironing will be yours again. And you going to the bus stop will be yours while you're working. And you uh, getting them ready in the morning will be yours. And... It is. It's, 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 it's my thing. But having the help is such a great help. Um, being able, I love it, you know. But am I tired? Yes. Do I wish I had help? Yes. Um, but again, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm not desperate for help. I'm not going to fake like I'm happy in a relationship when I'm not happy just to have help. 
Because I've I've seen people in a marriage with kids and that woman is a single mom and that man does not physically help. He financially makes sure things are paid because he lives in the house too. You know what I'm saying? He needs electricity too. He needs a gas too. But if he wasn't using the gas also, this stuff wouldn't be paid. He wouldn't care how you got your two cents together to get it done. And that right there, I don't want. I don't want the marriage my mom and my dad had because it wasn't helpful. It was very transactional and um, unloving and uh, phony. And because my mom is such an avoidant person of... um, conversation and and we need to fix this and anything to avoid any type of disagreement my mom was quiet about it and and it just continued and there's nothing in me that's just like "Mm, yeah sign me up you know and so yeah the hardest thing about um being a mom and parenting is doing it again and again and again, and again, and trying to find your balance and your peace in it. And this is it's not easy. Um, some days I'm just like super frustrated behind it. Um, and oof, is 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 hard to do. It's hard to do, and. Um, But I do it and I show up and I just want to tell parents who really push through without the help, mom and dad, um, I'm not telling you it's not hard. I'm not telling you it's not frustrating. I'm not telling you you're not going to be mad some days. I'm not telling you um, you should always do it with a smile on your face. I'm telling you to be real about it, but also remember that those kids did not ask to be here. But also remember... Uh, just grabbing anybody outside and bringing them in your home and hoping it works is not going to fix it. There's lots of marriages that are like that where people feel stuck and frustrated and they take out their anger on other people. Um, Don't be one of them. Don't be that person. Uh, Be better. Um, Choose wisely. If you want to date, take your time. People who you need who care about you, who want the best for you, are not going to be mad that you're taking your time. And um, I just wanted to express that. Thank you for listening to Cozy Room Podcast. You can find me on Twitter, IG, TikTok at Shambi Podden. Um, and my website is shambipodden.com. I just, there's space for us all to be better parents, but we have to be honest first. And that's my motto with this podcast is just being honest about parenting. Enjoy your week, even though it's the same thing. <laughs> Bye. Bye.